Uh, you write, okay. write a big words, or or that one you want this online question, so you can use the microphone, ask, ask, and then we try to uh, answer. Yeah, yeah. As soon as possible, the best thing to do. Okay. If you support them, they can do that. Two groups? Three groups? No. What about? Discussion and she explained it. Mm -hmm. and then she turned to the other online audience and she said, "Okay, for you guys, don't just sit around there and, and uh, on your lazy chair. Yep. This is your question. I would like your response within 10, 15 minutes." And they actually responded a lot. So uh, you can have a lot of interaction. You can have an yeah. enormous audience. The, the thing is, so you don't know how many online unless you can tell. Yep. Huh? Now it's just two, it's normal. But when you start beginning, then you will see more and more people. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
my name is Sam, by the way. Of course. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Anna, yes, good luck. Yep. Uh, what about the other, our two brothers sitting behind? Oh, you want to join the two groups? Just feel. Um... Okay, so can we try? Yeah, come. Yeah. Yep. We'll count down 15 seconds. Okay, so good afternoon. Welcome to the session on intergenerational dialogue. My name is Carlos Simões. I'm from the Portuguese Catholic Scout Association. My name is Tian Yongbun. Just call me Tian. I'm from the Asia Pacific region. Okay, so we will start this session um, with a game. Okay, because it's about intergenerational dialogue and we want you to sit down in groups uh, made of different generations. So, to start with... Yeah. Okay, so you will receive... Um, yeah? Okay. So, for this first game, you will have... Uh, some description in the different colors and of the major events that uh, occur in the world. And you have to pick it up, which of them occur during your youth. So which are the events that you are related, can relate with the time of your youth. And then you have to stand up and uh, find a person from a different colors, so from different generation, okay? So your groups should have uh, the, 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 what we were hoping for was to have one from each color, that means one from each generation, okay? So just stand up and try to identify the, the, in which group are you, and then uh, try to find other person from a different color, okay? No, 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 you just have to, to, to see what was your, you, during your youth, what were the events that you actually uh, uh, assist or, or have knowledge? Between uh, 14 and 18, yeah, it's considered your youth, okay. Okay. Welcome to the session. We are just beginning with, with, with the game, so please join us. Yes, please. So, yeah, what is, uh, during your generation time, what are the biggest things, which are the things uh, happening? Yeah, there's a time, correct. Yep. Okay, so can you please stand up and mix a little bit because I'm. You are, yeah, you have to mix, okay? We want mixed groups, different generation, okay? Just two groups, mis mixed ones. Come on, stand up. I know it's after lunch and people are... I'm blue. Okay, trying to find, yeah, try to find people from different color. Okay, so you need, you need a pink. You need, okay. Okay, a yellow, a pink. Okay, anyone is yellow?
Okay, so can you please sit down in two, sit in two groups? Mixed groups? Okay. Is there any yellow over there? Yellow? Okay, so can you join this group, please? Okay, so we'll need five people in each group. Okay, so can you sit pl on this? Yeah, please. Please be seated. You need to come into one of the groups. No. We'll have just two groups, okay? That was prepared for more participants. Yes. Okay, so now that we have the two groups constituted by different from uh, people from different generations, and we'll see that is, this has a main objective to have different views, different approach during the work that we are going to have in this session. Yeah, as you see from the slide that we have, uh, there are all together five objectives. The five objectives that we're going to uh, achieve. Number one is to explain the concept of generation and cohort and the importance of intergenerational dialogue. And number two is to describe the present demographic situation and different aspects to be explored. Number three, to identify the obstacles and barriers to have active dialogue between generations. Number four is identify the impact that demographic changes can have in the youth and adult relationships. Last but not least two, is to identify good practices that can enhance learning and cooperation across generations. The workshop structures are as follows. The concept of intergenerational dialogue and present demographic situation. Number two, different generations and better to dialogue. Number three, dialogue between generations. And there are two parts. One is the youth and adults relationship. And the other one will be the learning across generations. Last is the good practices for intergeneration dialogue. One is the youth and adults partnership. Yeah, we will further explain on that the structure as you follow. Okay. And the second one is more based on learning across generation of leaders, leaders from different ages. Yep. Now the, this is the working methods for these sessions here. One that we through game, uh, presentation, group work, case studies, and of course. No, I mean limiting to discussions as well. Concept of dialogue. Okay, so we'll just start with the, uh, the meaning of uh, a dialogue. And in several uh, um, keynote speakers that we have during the, the Congress, we had a lot of uh, inputs in terms of the importance of listening. And this is a, high, a very um, strong quality that we have in a dialogue. It's impossible to have a dialogue if people are not listening really what the other is saying. So it's a, a way of learning and uh, involving together to people. Um, and the main uh, objective is to understand different points of views and build common uh, ground. So 
the dialogue assumes that the other people has a piece of the answer, that we are not the only ones that have the right uh, uh, approach to see some, some, some thing. And we, the aim is to find a common ground, and for that we have to really listen what the other are saying. We have to be able to examine all points of view, not just our own, but to try to see what the other people are also trying to contribute. And admit that the, uh, the opinion of the other are important and can bring some uh, different aspects to my personal uh, point of view. And uh, to search for strengths and values in the opinion that the other people is, always, is also presenting. But then what is international dialogue? So the intergenerational dialogue, um, it's not only about creative, positive youth uh, development, but also positive adult development. So through speaking and uh, clarification, the different generations can find a common ground to uh, work together and to exchange experience and perspectives on different topics. And uh, international... Intergeneration dialogue is about listening, co-creating, knowledge sharing, two ways collaboration process. As this morning our keynote speaker is also mentioning these other areas as well. So if we are going to talk about uh, intergenerational dialogue, this means that we have different generations in the world. And this means that we have also some changings in the demographic situation in the world. This is not the accurate number of the population, but it's more or less uh, the, the correct number. And the, um, the population is increasing. This are the perspective in terms of a revision that was made of the population division um, by the World Population Prospects. So uh, for 2025, we are expecting to have a population of 8.1 billion people. For 2050, 9.6 billion and uh, 10.9 billion by 2100. So this is going to be an in increase of the numbers of the global population. And what about the edge between 2008 and 2040? Okay, so uh, between 2008 and 2040, people over 80 will increase 233% in the population. And people plus 65 years old will increase 160%. And all the other ages will increase 33%. Uh, so this is a major difference between the evolution of the world population in terms of uh, ages. And for the first time in the history of humankind, they are, the, provision, the prediction is that in two, three, five years maybe, for the first time in history, the population over uh, 65 is going to be, uh, is going to update the children under five. The population under 65 years older will be more, will increase, and we ha will have a swift, a switch, uh, a swift on the, on the, um, between the, the, the two, the two uh, evolution lines, okay? So we have less children under five and more people over 65. And this has very impact on the uh, world population because we were used to see the pyramid, okay? And we can see that through the evolution through 1950, 2010, 2050, and the prediction to uh, 2100 is that we'll have a more, um, much more people on uh, the upper, upper high um, age, and we'll have a decrease on the between zero and four years of age, and um, of course we'll have more females than males, and uh, this is a completely new uh, prediction projection in terms of the world population by age groups.
Now, um, Kara, maybe you further explain what uh, today's people are living longer, why, and healthier. Okay, so this is a, a sort of a review of what we're presenting because it's, it's known that uh, it depends on the region on, on the world, but uh, people are aging and are living longer and healthier lives due to the, all uh, um, the conditions of the medicine, of science. And at the same time, uh, in some parts of the world, uh, we are having a, a, a low birth uh, uh, rate. So this means that we'll have some impacts, like more generation at the job market. We'll have uh, two, three uh, gen different kinds of generation working at the same time on the same places. And we have also greater risk of exclusion and of loneliness, because we'll have more old people needing more assistance uh, uh, in, the, in the communities. And uh, it can happen also, it will happen, that young generation may be called to lead the older ones. So we'll be uh, the ones who are leading our in, in some, in some uh, jobs. So these changes in attitudes will have an impact on the interaction between the different generations that we have in the world. But what, um, it's a generation. So by the free dictionary, it's uh, the act of process of generating production, procreation, and can be also described as the average interval of time between the birth of parents and the birth of their springs. So we call it grandfather is a generation, the father is a generation, the child is a generation, grandchild another generation. And in a social science, the term means people within the delineated populations who experience the same significant events within a given <coughs> period of time. Thank so you. this was the theory by Mannheim in 1972, and this is a generational theory, a cohort theory, and it was based on this that we build up the, the game that we start with, with the session. So people, individuals um, uh, living at the same time in the society will, have, will be affected in terms of values, attitudes, beliefs, um, because they were born in the particular time and they have some experience in the society where they were living. So they belong to the same court or generation. <coughs> it's linked, it's linked Link. with, with, with age. That's why, for instance, in the game, if a generation, for instance, when we talk about baby boomers, it's a generation that during a certain time of period ex experience the same events that occur in, in society, like the Second World War. And Usually they call a generation between 25 and 30 years old. The difference between a generation and, and the other. Yeah. yeah. In the, in the, the uh, certain time or, uh, period of time, the same period of time. That's why the baby boomers are those who were, were born uh, around the same time and then experience the same world events in during the, uh, the, the same period of time. Yeah, Kara. During their youth. During their youth, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Kara, maybe yes. the... Yeah. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Yeah, Kara, maybe the le next slide may be yes. more interesting to all of us here. Okay, so this is um, one of the possible ways because there are a lot of... of, of there's a lot of, of possible ways of, uh, with uh, an interval of one or two years to present the different generations that we have, like the GI generation, the silent generation, baby boomers, the X, the millennium, and the Z. And we can see this, that uh, uh, the major trends uh, are different uh, from generation to generation. For instance, if we can consider the silent generation, one of the things that more more characteristic was respect for authority in terms of job markets. And we can see that the Generation X, one of the characteristics is, is that they are skeptical of authority. 
And then we can see that um, the baby boomers were much more work-centric than the millenniums that are more uh, family-centered. So these are, of course, this is not applied to every single individual. They are exceptions, but in terms of definition of the generation, uh, we can see how the generations can have different perspective of uh, family, of working places, of relation with the, the, the relation with the technology, and this will have an impact when the generations are put together to work together, and we have to take into consideration that they have different ways of seeing things. Can we, uh, Sarah, just to uh, identify among us, and just to identify among us, uh, how many of us here are the silent group generation? Anybody born here? One, okay. The baby broomer. Uh -huh. One, two, three, okay. What about the Generation X? Uh -huh, there are four. Wow. What about millennium? Whoa, there are three. Any Generation X? No. Because these are all born after 1994. But then you can see here, if you are a baby boomer, likely that your children are not the Generation X, but rather your children are here. Unless you married early and produce early. Yeah, they are not together, but but it depends also on the situation, the environment. It could be that you are before 1964, you are here already. It depends on the because this is generally just a, a classification of, of that the edge depends on the and, and the year. But it could be that in between that you're always a mix too. Okay? And there's no concrete. Uh, there's if you no go to if you go and look on the on the on several documents. This is not a scientific division of the generations. There are several presentations more two years or prior two years or two years after. So it really depends on the source. This one? Yes. Uh, there are the, the major yeah. threats. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Yes, it mm. depends on the culture, it depends, it is, yeah, as I was yeah. saying, this is not a, a, a science, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. okay, but but this is just, this is just for, for us to introduce the topic that uh, um, different generations have different uh, um, opinions, different views of different aspects, and if we have this into consideration, it would be much easier when we have to work with different peoples and at least try to, 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 to cooperate and to learn across generations. And this will take us to the, like, the next uh, thing. The barrel, now this is where the gap coming in, uh, the barrel to dialogue. Now, challenges and fear among us uh, in aging is the powerful and transforming uh, demographic forces that will bring what? The two areas of challenges uh, in the living standard after we retire. And the other hand is the fears that impose a heavy burden on the younger generation. Are we experiencing that already? Oh. Is our children taking care of us? Or is it a, it will be a, the burden of our children in the future? So now we have to build our, our, our own resources. Negative stereotype, if you can see here. Adism is a type of discrimination that involves prejudice against other people. Adism is a social attitude where people believe that older adults can be treated in demanding ways as less value 
less capable. Is our brother Dom? How do you react to that? <laughs> yeah. It's a question of the spirits of the yes. mind. The yes. thinking. Uh, yes. Yeah, the state of mind. And the adultism now, you, as you can see that, refer to all the behaviors and attitudes that flow from the assumption that adults are better than young people, uh, baby boomer, and are entitled to act upon young people in many ways without their agreement. I think in the Chinese society, in the Oriental, those who are baby boomers, this is, you listen to me, you follow me, or else. But now, the situation changed. Okay, so uh, we can see it this in Sorry. in terms of uh, challenge and fear, but we surely sh should see this also in terms of no? yeah. in terms of opportunity, because to have different generations uh, working together and uh, cooperating is a very good opportunity to exchange experience, knowledge, skills, creativity, um, the using of technology. It doesn't have to be uh, seen as a bad thing to have different generations working and, and, uh, and uh, working to, together in the same environment. So there are opportunities uh, to commitment and to exchange learning between generations. And this will take us to the first group work. Can I have this? No, it's not this one. So we'll have the first group task that, we'll, that you have to identify. And you already have some papers and markers in your, in your table. So identify at least two barriers or obstacles to dialogue between generations and try to identify what are the possible solutions. These are going to be very fast, just five minutes, because the major group work will, is going to happen after. Okay, Just two barriers or obstacles between, uh, for the dialogue between generations. And for those who are participating online, they can also try to, to give the contribution and identifying these two barriers and we will ask uh, after for um, the contribution that arrived from online participations, okay? So talk among the group and just five minutes for this, okay?
Okay.
two generations who is still here. Is that saying? Is that saying this one? Is the diamond group ready? Your diamond. Diamond group ready? Okay. Uh, what about the goal? Uh, go, the go team. Are you ready? Yep. Yes. Maybe we invite the go team to come across here. Yes. Yep. So this is on. All right, we found two barriers. Hello, uh, those online, um, uh, and we thought of two solutions. The first one's experience. <clears throat> we older people don't feel valued for their experience, and then young people um, with their own experience would like to sort of you know experience for themselves. So the older people want to impart their wisdom, uh, and and when they see the young people, they want to do this. I want to do A, and they've, and, and, you know, as an old, and so if I was an older person, as you know, that I've seen and done A, therefore I'd like to tell you that it might not be a good idea. Let's go to do B. But the young people go, no, I don't want to listen to you. I want to do A, and they'll do it, and then they realise, ah, oh, maybe I could have possibly listened to them. So the solution would probably be provide time for both ways to have the, the, the older people respect that the young people might have to learn from their experiences, but might, so they might not impart their wisdom, but there might be other times where the young person may sort of decide, maybe I should listen to the wisdom for me to undertake the activity that I want to do. So that would be one of the barriers and then the solution for that. Um, the second one was uh, language and communication and terms between younger and older people. So different terms are used by different types of generations. So the older generation might, um, uh, well actually, all right, I'm going to use an Australianism, okay, which I don't know if it's going to be used around the world and a few Aussies are going to shake their head. So in Australia, the younger people, younger than me, I am 31, so younger people than me have said, you know, if they like something, they use the term fully sick for, for them to actually say that they, it thinks it's great. So oh, they're trying out this new breakfast cereal and, they, and mum goes, what do you think of it? And they go, it's fully sick and they keep eating it. Now, you might think fully sick, well, sick means you're ill, you're not well, so the older generation think there's something wrong, but the younger generation use it as a term to say that it's great, it's fantastic. So that's how we mean by the language or communication and you know, like uh, terms um, that are used in communication. So a solution would be um, attention to the process and detail. So when you, 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 even though you might sort of um, um, say the terms in the younger generation, um, you sort of might have to uh, respect um, uh, the take the time and, and, and assume that person, people that are older than you, whether that be your parents or your grandparents in a situation like that, would assume you know, that you know what they're talking about. So you have to take a step back. Uh, or vice versa, the older people might give an older term of something, whether that be a, um, like um, in Australia we have a use of an, a, you know, a suitcase. In um, parts of Australia, a suitcase is termed very differently in different parts of Australia. So in the north, it's used a port, um, um, but then the younger people don't know that term. So they only know it as a suitcase. And so there's the two-way way of actually taking the time to understand that you might not know the term and then take a level of, of normal language for, for you to communicate that way. There you go. Thank you. Give a round of applause uh, to Ross. Okay, let's go to the next group. Who is going to present? Yeah, the diamond. Okay.
Hello, everyone online. I'm known for my excellent writing when I have to put um, um, the results of a discussion on uh, Butcher's paper. We isolated three barriers to dialogue. Interestingly, they overlap with the first group, and I don't think our conclusions were significantly different. The first one was attitudes in life. Uh, we decided that we should talk to the older ones, if I can use that term, and give them our perspective, and they can probably give them, give us their perspective, and in sharing, we can probably come to an agreement um, on a particular attitude. So it's a sharing process and a compromise process, so everyone ends up happy with the other. And a similar thing applies with our second um, barrier, language. We thought, well, firstly, the group decided that empowerment was really important. There's a fear of losing power to the other and therefore that compels uh, a compromise again because one group will fear if they don't understand the language of the other or don't share the concepts then they'll lose power and the other group will dominate. So again it's a question of uh, compromising so that you don't lose power to the, the, the um, the opposing group. And finally, experience. Uh, I thought it was a really good solution. It wasn't mine. Try sharing the experience in question together. And if you share it, you'll get an understanding of the other side and there mightn't be a necessary uh, to have any sort of compromise. So that's the way we thought we'd overcome this. Thank you very much. Okay. So we will deal with some barriers and obstacles on our second uh, group work because there are much more barriers. This was just a start to start with. So let's go and um, talk about the dialogue between generations in uh, two different ways, youth, youth adult partnerships and learning across generation of different leaders from different ages. So in terms of youth and adult relationship, um, this means that, uh, and this is some, uh, some, um, some document from, uh, it's not from a uh, um, scouting perspective, but in terms of, uh, of uh, some research that has been done um, even outside, is that youth and adult partnership has to uh, develop different uh, ways and attitudes and behavior. And this means that it has to be breaking down the traditional uh, communication and the barriers and power dynamics. And one very interesting thing is that uh, um, is the concept of investing in leadership skills. It's, it's a way of how are we educating our youth for the future. It's uh, uh, to put the emphasis of giving them the tools, the necessary tools, for them to develop leadership, uh, leadership skills for the future. And it can involve different principles. The sharing decision, uh, making the power uh, equality, um, power equally. And um, to invite and to embrace youth to work along with adults in the planning, in the implementation, in the evaluation, to involve them in the process of decision making. So the role of the adults is to engage young, young people, is to give them motivation, it's to be the support for their uh, enthusiasm in order to um, they grow up and, and uh, learn different skills, attitudes and knowledge. And this is also very true that the, the adults that are willing to work with youth, they are in a, uh, uh, in a strategically, strategically situated a situation to translate the experience that they have and to be seen as um, role models and to be, also, uh, to be also able to support them in their learning process. What about for adults in scouting in the context of intergeneration dialogue? Uh, support the acquisition, use or for the future development of the knowledge, skills, attitudes required to achieve the goal of the 
organization. In our context, it's the National Scout organization uh, manage National Scout organization uh, to contribute to the development of young people in achieving their full potentials as individual. I think that, that we are mentioning all this why is talking about the purpose of the scouting. To contribute to the development of the young people in achieving their full potentials as individuals. The purpose of the scouting, there are five areas of potentials for individuals. Uh, there are the physical, the intellectual, emotional, spiritual, and social. Yes, uh, Dominic. Yes, yes. It's a two-way yeah. process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. for sure, yep. for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's... Okay. That's true. And even the definition of intergenerational dialogue, as we've seen in, at the beginning, it's youth development, but it's also adult development. So it's a two-way collaborative uh, uh, process. It's not just one-way uh, process. And in scouting, we have, um, we have our method that is proven to be a very good method over the years. So we have the scout method, where it is well identified what are the role of the young people and what is the role of the adults. So the adults who should be the support of the group life, of the, of the things that are uh, happening during the units, in the, in the patrols, using all the elements of the scout method. And this now, just very quick, some, some, some slides, just to explain, um, we make an exercise, and this is a quite a, just to provoke some, some, some discussion. Um, scout movement is a, a, a youth movement, and we make the exercise to pick it up the census, from the latest census on world level, to try to see what was the ratio between young people and the volunteers, adults, in the association. So it just, just uh, some uh, graphics uh, that are by region. So this is uh, European. European scout region. So you can see that, of course, this is different from association to association. And even in, inside the associations, the number is not distrib distribute uh, uh, equally by all, all the country. There are areas in the countries that this can be applied, but this is just based on the total numbers that associations provide. So we have between the adults and the, and the, and the young people. So we can see in here 2.3, and then the, big, the highest one, 41.7. This is the number of young people divided by the number of adults in the association. And if we go to the, <coughs> the Eurasia. Eurasia. Eurasia region. So, oops, sorry. Eurasia. So we have 8.8 .8 and 52.2. The Arab region. Arab region, 7 to 64.3. The Asia Pacific region. We have the lowest, 2.5, with Japan and Thailand, 38.5. Oh, of course, this depends also much on the system of the, of the Scout Associations. These are the these NSO. Are, these are the, uh, the countries. These are the countries. What, what I'm sorry? No, see, this is the total membership. 
the yeah, this is the amount of every Cub Scouts, Ventures and Rovers as a group of young people, and then all the volunteers and professionals of the association that are. So this was made the ratio. This yes, yes, and the highest is twenty-eight by one. Okay, so this is Inter-American and Africa. Africa region. So 5.8 and 73.9. There are some countries that are missing, but this is depending on the, on, the, on the census. So this was just to highlight that uh, uh, even there are several differences uh, uh, between countries and, between, uh, and even inside associations, the number are not uh, um, distribute uh, um, uh, equally between the, 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 the different regions inside the, 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 the national um, associations. But this is just to keep in mind that uh, countries and, and associations should have this in mind uh, to, to make, be able to analyze within the association what is the ratio between young members and, and, and uh, adults. Adult. And to see if the, if the numbers are um, allowing to, to, to apply the scout methods as it's, it, it's supposed to be applied in the associations. Yes. Doesn't that depend not so much on how many adults you have, particularly in the senior sections, but take the scout section, how many good patrol leaders you've got and how one leader, if necessary, can delegate the patrol leaders who really should run most of the program. Yeah. In venture is similar and in rovers you don't need any leaders at all for most of the time. Yeah. So it's really only the junior sections, the cubs, this is a question, yeah. and the, the beavers or whatever you might call them. Yeah. Of course that the, the adult support is different from, the, from age section to just age section. But this is just for you to think about. If the population is aging and we are getting more adults, uh, we should keep in mind to have the ratio as, uh, as uh, um, not to have too many adults and less younger. So, because this can uh, uh, switch, the, the aim of the scouting um, um, is to educate young people with the support of adults, okay? No, it's, this is just a, a, a thing, uh, something that associations have to have to plan like everything else. They have to plan in terms of how many mem members will have, will they accept in, in terms of the support of the adults, in terms of uh, materials that they have, in terms of everything that is available in the association. So this is also something that they have to, to think about it. Okay. So, and when we are going to learning across uh, generations, and in this part, we are going to talk about uh, working between um, different generations, generations of leaders. What can be learned across generations? If you are going to, to, to be able to, um, to combine some skills, some, some experience. Some of you of the fir in the first group task was talking about the experience, but how can we combine the, uh, the experience or the lack of experience? The, the, the how are we going to give the opportunity for people to gain experience? And also, how are we going to, to, to take the most out of wisdom and, uh, and knowledge that some people have and then they can uh, transmit to the other generations? B because it's natural to have a friction between what is heritage and what is innovation. So, and we know that in scouting, it's a, it's a, a proper, uh, it, it's a safe environment for generations to work together. We were talking, some of the keynotes were also talking about the way we should um, uh, listen to the other and be open and with empathy to work together. And we know that in scouting, we have this safe environment to failure, to have failures, to have successes, and to learn with each other. So a good mixture of enthusiasm and activism with experience and knowledge. You know, Kara, in 1993, when I was attending the war conference in Bangkok, a youngster, we were talking about the empowerment. 
at, at the end, I don't know whether it's uh, our brother Dominic was stay as well in 1993. And the conclusion is, young people, you have the time. And the older person, they have the experience. And you combine the two together in a partnership. This is what we're supposed to do in scouting. So next will be the case studies. Uh, Kara? Yep. Uh, in this uh, task, uh, two, a team of eight scouts leader working together to organize a national jamboree. And uh, Kara is distributing the uh, types of leaders that we have in the team. And, and each team will be doing two cases. Uh, two cases. Okay, so um, you will have uh, the characterization of the eight uh, people, persons that are inside the team. You have a case study with a description of what happened during they, uh, they were prepa the, the preparation for the National Jamboree. And then you have some questions at the end of the case study uh, that you have to answer in order to identify what is the conflict between that two people and what are the possible outcomes and how they can learn together and what is the possible solution, okay? For the people who are online, I don't know if we have someone online, the case studies are uh, on the website so people can download and can also work this at home.
total body has to go watch on this uh, live stream, okay. and so far no 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 comment. Oh no no comment. No questions. Yeah. I saw that you have uploaded uh, yes. uh, upload some documents yes. right yes. here. Yes, that's right. 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 Yes,
Okay, so we are ready for the presentations. I will ask first group to come here to present. And while the first group is presenting, the second group can read the description of the case study because they already read yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so maybe someone can help, no? Uh, no, no Come no. on. Come, I will do it for you. But this is your case study. Okay. Hello, Australia. Um, okay, let's start. Uh, near, to, near to me. Okay. Okay, now what do you think is the main problem between John and Wan Ming? Uh, we felt that they were not communicating, they were communicating, but they were misunderstanding each other, they were not respecting each other's views and experience. Um, uh, uh, sorry, can you just give a, a quick summary, just to... To, to say what is the situation, just very quickly. Oh, the situation, Okay, just yeah. very... Uh, uh, well, uh, John and Wang Ming have worked together to provide all the food to participants, but they have different opinions which have now escalated. John thinks that all the uh, scouts should get the ingredients and cook all the meals in the camp, at least the breakfast and dinner. Wang Ming, she wants to distribute pack meals ready to eat for the whole time because she thinks it's easier and that the participants will have my, more time to enjoy the activities. Uh, John tries to explain that's, that cooking is part of the scout method and it has an important educational value. Wen Ming thinks that John is old-fashioned and that scouting today is different from the past. Okay. He also believes that young people like more um, pre-prepared fast food meals. John thinks that Wen Ming doesn't understand scouting very well and the educational purpose of camping. Okay. That was the scenario. Okay, so the main problem we felt they were communicating but they were not expect respecting each other's views and experience. They were not they were misunderstanding each other. The second question was, is Wayne Ming discriminating John because of his age? And we think so, that yes, she, she thinks that he is, he is old-fashioned. Um, what can be learned in this situation? That they should be working together, um, having more empathy with each other's point of view and looking for a, a common goal. How can they reach an agreement? Um, well, we felt they should discuss a, a compromise, maybe that they could have um, takeaway packs for, for lunch to give the participants more time to enjoy the activities and cook breakfast and dinner in the, in the camp so that they, um, they benefit from that as well. Any comments on this? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so do, do you think that they can manage to, to reach uh, uh, one understand? So they can manage uh, just the two of them or they will need the third person to help? You think they can manage? Yeah. Yes. But do they think they have different concepts of what uh, uh, a scout camp should be in terms of uh, cooking as part of educational, um, uh, as an educational tool, and the other just as uh, something to outside of scout activities? Yeah? They can't. Okay. 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 So the camp will happen. It's not a conflict that cannot be overcome. Okay. Okay. Next group, please. Hello.
Hello everyone offline. We're pleased to be back again. Has the other group had the opportunity to read our case study? The first question was what do you think is the main problem between Thomas and Fatima? We haven't got all the evidence here but taking what we have got and inferring some extra matters we think that Thomas doesn't trust young people because up the top it talks about young and creative team and there's a reaction to that. Um, but we also think there's an element of control and resistance to change in it. Uh, we infer the last from the second question, and this is the second question. Is Thomas just cautious or is resistant to change? And our answer to that was probably both. Of course, we're not there. We do our best. The third question was, should Fatima's experience outside scouting be considered by Thomas? Well, one would have to say irresistibly, yes. Um, you would consider all aspects of st experience, not just scouting experience, if it's valid and helpful, and it obviously is. And the last question was, how can they reach an agreement? We had really good discussion about this. This is very, very helpful input from all the members, if I may say so. And our res response, and I think you can see it there, was that Thomas has good leadership skills, so therefore his observations probably have validity, and therefore, Fatima should accept the um, sorry, Thomas should accept the innovative ideas of Fatima, but we should help Thomas be satisfied in his own mind, so she needs to accept some guidelines from Thomas to make sure the same problems don't occur. And there's probably other team members with skills, so she needs to accept advice from them. And we thought that's a sharing thing, and it should satisfy everyone will then get what they want. Is there any questions on that? Any suggestions of things we possibly missed? Are the leaders happy with that? Thank you. And uh, especially this case study was to, to point out that sometimes uh, in the associations where uh, people are trying to prepare some big activity, national jamboree or so ever, they think that they have to have a strong team with experience that can assure the, the, a good camp and an excellent activity. But then is, it's, it's a catching. If you are, done, if you are not uh, picking up different, with, even with experience outside scouting or even without experience inside scouting, they have to have the opportunity to gain experience. If you are never going to give them the first, the first uh, opportunity to gain experience, they will never have the experience that you want them. And on the other hand, if you are not preparing the future generations, you can have all the same people working in the national jamborees, but the people are not going to live forever. So in some, in, you have to prepare new generations to be able to prepare an excellent activity also. So, yes. Yes? When I run training courses, I generally do the outdoor activities as well as other things, and I tell my course participants that we're going to, say, build a tower, and I will say to them, I'm really going to sit here and watch and see how you demonstrate skills, and I'm not going to interfere except in one case. What would, what would be the situation where I'd interfere? So, yeah, safety matters. If I think they've constructed part of the tower wrong and it's going to collapse, well, clearly I'm, I'm not going to say, don't do it, but I'll say, is that lashing going to work? Do you think such and such? So I respectfully agree with you, and it's experiential learning, and it's learning by doing. And if something goes wrong and there's no injury possibility, they probably won't do it again. But if you give them some vague instruction, it's probably not going to stick in their mind. Let them make the mistakes. Thank you very much. So we are going... We are getting to the last part of, of the workshop. <laughs> yeah. If you see that uh, these are some of the good practices that can be done to overcome the obstacles. Uh, the solutions are such as negotiation. You negotiate. Uh, you are <laughs> by self, in fact, uh, so resolutions of that. And secondly is the mediation uh, through a third party. Uh, and then habilitation, of course, you know, through a third party that have you tried the situations? But skills is the opportunity that offer to strengthen the communications. So 
skills, as mentioning by the key speakers this morning. Skills is the scouts that relate to the relationship. What type of skills that we're talking about is the attitude adjustment. And we are going to give you this document uh, that we find out to be very helpful. This is 12 steps on fighting fair. So this is just four ex three examples, but uh, it, it's 12 questions for you to, to try to solve on. When, when, you, have a, when you are facing a, a, facing a conflict, maybe if you go through that 12 questions, they will make you think about, uh, do I want to resolve the conflict? So if you, if you want, so be willing to fix it. Uh, can I see the whole picture? Am I just seeing my point of view? Uh, what are the needs and uh, anxieties of the others? Because most of the conflicts has an emotional ba uh, ground. Are people who are too proud or too scared of losing power or don't want to seem weak? So a lot of emotional, it's, it's uh, related with the, with the conflict. And we have also some documents. There are tips for adults working with youth and e tips for youth working with adults. So it's uh, uh, also a list and a document that we are going uh, to give to you. Be open and uh, take advantage Thanks. of the expertise that youth can offer. Treat young people as individuals. And for the youth also to think about that most of the adults have good intentions. Sometimes even then have certain uh, uh, have, in, have uncertainties. So they have to be aware that adults may not uh, um, uh, necessarily, when they are criticism, when they are criticism, they not necessarily mean that they are condescensions. Constructive criticism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, So, and uh, we have also, and this is, uh, there's, a, um, it's uploaded on the website, there's an Euroscout doc in terms of, uh, that talks about mentorship and coaching. And this is always also a very good way of uh, uh, sharing skills and uh, between young people and young uh, um, adults. adults. The mentorship uh, or the coaching. And we can see... The mentorship, it's much more of a personal development uh, uh, relationship. Um, and the, the, this relationship is results for both the mentee and the mentor. In terms of the coaching, it's more an informal relationship, and it's much more based with a task, with giving some to, to develop some skills, some specific task. So we can see most different in this, in this charter between the focus of the mentor and on the coach. For the mentor, is more the individual to learn through a, a long period of time. For the coach, is more the performance in the specific task. So um, I really think that you can use this kind of knowledge from the Euroscout doc uh, to work within your associations. So if we apply this to the case studies that we have, maybe John can uh, act as a mentor of uh, young men. Because they have so different ways of being, seeing scouting. If they can get to this level of exchanging uh, learning and experience and different uh, uh, kinds of seeing scouting, John can be the mentor of, of young men. And at the same time, um, we have uh, an, another example of coaching. Um, if we have someone, for instance, one thing that wasn't uh, talking here, but it's very uh, well known, the different uh, uh, skills of using technology. And one of the, of the case studies was Peter, that was a young man that was setting up all the technologies for the jamboree. The, the participation, even the meetings through Skype, using Skype. And in a team, we had Catherine, Catherine. that doesn't, didn't know how to work with technology. 
And so this was another conflict situation. And in here, we can apply that for a specific task of learning how to use Skype, how to use the Dropbox, how to be fully participating in the meetings of the, of the team. Peter can be the coach of Catherine. So these are always uh, uh, possible solutions of overcome uh, situations and conflicts. As long as yeah, Juan Min and Catherine want that. Yeah. If they don't yeah. want it, it yeah. doesn't matter what yeah. the others We didn't want. have time to go there, yeah. but one of the things of Catherine is that she was too proud to ask for help. That was yeah. other, yeah. other, other example. There needs to be goodwill, and if there's goodwill, you can usually solve it. If, if there's problems about loss of face or being threatened, or feeling that they're disgraced in front of the others, then it just won't happen. The goodwill is the overriding matter. So we, quite, we have a challenge for you because we think that it's a question of attitude and it's a question of contribution um, of each other for having to enhance more interne intergenerational dialogue. So we don't have time to do it here, but you receive it along with the documents that support the good practices for intergenerational dialogue. And uh, we wish to challenge you to have a personal commitment. So for you to find one concrete action that you can do for the next two months in changing, increasing dialogue between generations. It can be in Scout. It can be in your family. It can be at your workplace. So you have a template for that? <laughs> If you want, because we, uh, this was made in other, in other sessions, in other workshops, different uh, events, if you want, and uh, if you want to fill it out, you can give it either to me or Theon, and we can promise that in two months you will receive it on your, on your, in your house, the commitment, to see if you really did something to enhance intergenerational dialogue. So if you want, you just have to define a concrete action, you put your uh, home address, and you give it to us, and in two months, I will send you by email, by, 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 by post, yeah. So it's a way of you to receiving this at home and say, oh my God, I forgot to do this action that I had the commitment to do something for intergenerational dialogue, for improving this aspect, okay? Just a challenge if you want. So. Kara, what so, is your final remarks for all of them? Okay, sure. You see, in conclusion, uh, demographic changes have impact on the social, economic, and culture conditions as a present society. Now, too, these changes can also bring some challenges to the Scout movement as a youth movement supported by the adults. Very important, supported by the adults. But then, the relationship must be always maintained. Youth and adults, or adult and youth relationship. Good opportunity to rethink the organizational structures. That's why empowerment, youth involvement, youth participation in decision making. It's a good mixture of leaders from different generations working together at all levels in the National Scout organizations. And we must recognize that intergeneration dialogue is a very powerful educational tool that we should use it correctly. It is? Okay. We are going to the end of the workshop and we have a community meeting to Okay. Yeah, it's it's because it's already five minutes before so they cut it. Okay, so um, we have a, a gift for you. It's actually one of my favorite sentences. A very old one. So if you give me the evaluation of the session, I will give you the gift. I found out this, this can be very efficient if you do it like this.
Okay, so thank you very much for attending this session. This workshop on intergenerational dialogue, uh, it's be um, um, at your disposal later on. And uh, we have a version for a three hours workshop also. So if you want to, um, to try to run this workshop in your association, for some training course, a specific training course, please ask me because it's going to be available a three hours workshop on intergenerational dialogue. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much and good afternoon.